I have one more special treat. Because uh -oh. I know you're used to some very high-end food. Oh, no. <laughs> I watched the show. Hold on. No. Hold on. We aim to impress our guests here. Welcome to Food Fears, where I make something you hate taste great. Today's episode is going to be absolute limb sanity because we have Stephen Lim. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to be here. Most people who are here aren't nearly as excited as you, which is fantastic. Are they usually like pretty nervous or scared or? They're nervous, but they overcompensate by acting really confident, but I can I see. smell the fear on them and I smell nothing on you. It's weird to say this, but I am a professional eater. It's like you can eat 60 hot dogs no, in 12 minutes. No, wow, I could try. <laughs> but I get paid to eat, so this is yeah. this is just right up my alley. I mean, I've I've followed you on the gram for a while. I see you out in K Town eating chokbal, eating the Korean. Wow. Cakes okay, you know your stuff. That's some deep cut. That's some okay. deep cut. So I mean, you've traveled all across the world. You've eaten so many things. What has been like the single best thing that you've eaten? Okay, one of the best things. This was not on camera. We went to Japan, and the Tasty Japan team brought us out to eat, and they fed us horse mane. Have you had it for raw horse mane? It was one wait. Of the what do you mean raw horse mane? Like you're eating the hair? It's not the hair though. It's like the part of the head that's like near the hair. But it's like they call it mane, wow. but it's like the head. I used to be a very picky eater actually. Really? I'm from Ohio. I'm like as American as they come. So I only okay. ate like chicken nuggets and French fries growing up, and only until I tried to resolve my own identity when I was like in college that I started to eat more adventurously. Okay, so, gotcha. No, yeah, for, you probably ate more adventurously than I did growing up, <laughs> being from like Little Saigon area, yeah. yeah. All right, well, I don't know if I can shock you with anything, and I don't know if you're gonna be scared of it, but I'm excited to see where this goes. Okay. Are you ready to see the I'm secret ingredient? super excited. All right, today we're eating, it's beef heart. Oh, so, okay. Have you had, you've had beef heart before, yeah? I've never seen it in this form. Is, isn't it bigger than this? I've seen bigger. Haven't we all? But uh, <laughs> but this is a nice petite heart, and so you and I are actually going to share this. So this has simply been boiled for safety, just so we can like try it completely plain. Awesome. You know, I'm actually really excited. This is actually really similar to a Sichuan dish. A it, is. it is. Fuji fei pian. It is. Oh my god. You Fuji fei pian. It's, yeah. it's literally okay. That's my favorite Chinese dish of all time. Really? I have an album on my phone called Fuji fei pian. We should ditch this stupid no, show no, and no, just no, go no, hang no, no. out, man. Yeah, you wanna do that? Let's go to Monterey right. Park, dude. It's right there. <laughs> like we... It's customary for us to just take a bite of this plane. Okay. So if you just wanna pick that up. Dude, I've I never- I hope you're not a germaphobe. No, I'm not. I've never seen it like this before, though. Yeah, this is whole. So you see some of the veins are actually still in there, and then you got this little fat Whoa. cap on top. Whoa. So it almost looks like brisket. So we're just gonna gingerly touch our tips. Cheers. And on the show, we tip it and dip it All down right. the hatch. Hmm. You should do some sauce. <laughs> you, it, it needs some flavoring. Mm -hmm. it's, okay, I will be honest, it's not that good. Yeah. Yeah, it's, okay, it's like, it, and, it, it literally tastes like paper, but the texture of like styrofoam, mm. but then the chewiness of octopus. It does have an octopus-like quality. Sorry. <laughs> what are you getting? Just eat this alone. I don't like that I don't like, I don't, uh, I don't like that What is all. that? Mm, that's just heart fat. Okay, since you've already had beef heart in Chinese dishes and other foods, I'm not gonna do anything like that. I think I'm gonna take a page from your childhood, okay. harken you back to the days when you were a picky eater, okay. and try and make something completely all American. I, I want it to be better than Fuji Fei Pian. Ooh, Can you do that? Better than Fuji Fei Pian? Yes. Uh, we'll see. Go watch a couple episodes of Real Housewives or something, <laughs> and I'll have a delicious dish waiting for you. Awesome, I'm excited. Okay, to prepare a beef heart, you gotta take a really sharp boning knife and you're just gonna trim off the excess fat on the outside. This is a long, tedious process, but just because you're cooking food fears doesn't mean you can take shortcuts. Write that down. Then you're gonna flip it. I could do that all day. You're gonna use that to carve out the arteries and any other ligaments that you don't want. I would be terrible at doing surgery on like a real person. Not that anyone's asked me to yet, one day. So we're gonna save this guy for pastrami. It actually almost looks like a beef brisket, so that's awesome. And now we have to start grinding up the rest of it. So once you get that beef heart cleaned up, you're gonna cut it into large chunks. You're gonna run that through a meat grinder. Kobe, almost got it. The Kobe was both a beef and a basketball joke. That's called a double entendre. I studied abroad in France. Start feeding more beef in there. The machine's hungry, it wants to eat beef. And you want about eight ounces. Use the hand that's covered in raw heart meat to touch your scale. One of the Smosh guys weighs his coffee on this in the morning. Pranked, you have E. coli. You're gonna form that into a patty. 
Perfect. To prepare the beef heart pastrami, you gotta get that beef heart curing. Shout out to Chef Sammy Monsur, friend of the show. He has this on his menu at his restaurant, so I was like, what if I make a less good version? And that's what we're doing. So I'm using a mixture of Morton's Tender Quick, which is a curing salt, brown sugar. This is ground coriander, which is one of the flavors you actually associate with pastrami. Ditto for black pepper. And then you get a little bit of extra smoke because we're doing ours in the oven. We're adding smoked paprika. And we're doing a dry cure. Some people do like a wet brine. I'm not some people. I'm a loose cannon. You want my gun or my badge, you can't have it. You're gonna rub that down. You're gonna put it in a Ziploc bag. Sleep tight, sweet beef heart. Get it in the fridge for about two days. Then you're gonna take that out of the fridge and you're gonna soak it in water. That's just gonna rinse some of the excess salt off. <laughs> wow, those last two days were crazy. So much happened. I can't believe they announced a Joe Dirt prequel. You're gonna dry it off a little bit. And now we're ready to make our spice mixture. So what we gotta do is take a coffee grinder. Garrett from Smosh uses this to grind his coffee in the morning. And if he doesn't get E. coli from the scale, he's sure gonna get it from this. And then you're gonna coat that in a mixture of ground black pepper, whole coriander. I'm going with whole caraway. That's a flavor you get from rye bread and then mustard, because like pastrami, mustard, rye, you guys get it. Four, five, six, uh, seven, seven, seven seconds. Rub that all over, try and get as much of that spice mixture on there. So to cook the pastrami, we're using an oven smoker. You're gonna take soaked mesquite chips and put that in the bottom of the basin. So you wanna wait for these wood chips to really start giving off smoke, you'll smell it when it's ready, and then you're gonna put the beef heart in there on top of that rack, get it in the oven at 300 degrees for about 40 minutes or however long, like don't let me tell you how to live your life. Like I'm not, I'm not your mom, you know, I'm not, unless you want me to be, I can give you like life advice, take you to ball games, teach you to play catch, you know, if that's your thing. Or if you're into like theater, I can come to your recitals, you know, just be there if you need me. And then you're gonna put a pan on top, you're gonna place the pastrami on there, shut the door. It's really hot, you gotta smack it. Yes, smack it. There we go. It's too hot to touch and I forgot uh, gloves. So I, I can just like, oh, like pant, like take that and like, oh, put it in. Throw it in the oven at 300 degrees for about 40 minutes. Wow, so much has happened over the last 40 minutes. I can't believe David Spade dropped out of the Joe Dirt prequel. You always wanna use a chainmail glove with a meat slicer, even though there are three layers of protection on the actual meat slicer itself, but it makes me feel cool and like I'm gonna challenge someone to an honor duel later. Beautiful. To make our fried onions, we're going really simple. We're just gonna mandolin out some red onions, dredge that in seasoned flour. Season it with whatever. Season it with the blood of your enemies, who cares? Throw it in a fryer at 375 degrees for about a minute or two. Now, we're gonna make our Russian dressing. I start by finely chopping red bell pepper, onion, and pickles. Get all your aggression out. But I wanna listen to Slipknot, Dad! Then I add that to mayonnaise and ketchup. Man, what a long drawn out process for a simple sauce that you can just buy. And then I add smoked paprika, beet juice, horseradish, and a little bit of Worcestershire sauce to finish it off. And it's ready to go on your beef heart burger. So to cook up these burgers, I'm gonna get a grill pan screaming hot with a little bit of vegetable oil in it. A lot of salt in that burger. Slam it right down. Get that in there and we're actually gonna leave the paper on because once it steams, it'll be easier to peel away. Sometimes if you take it off too soon, it'll pull some of the excess meat off with it. And you're gonna go ahead and peel away that paper. But when the steam hits it, it creates a little water barrier that'll peel off really easily. Wow, that looks cool. I'm always surprised at myself. Also, it infuses it with that fun paper flavor. All right, you wanna salt the other side. And now this bad boy looks ready to flip. Right when that flips, you gotta add your two slices of cheddar cheese. That's a sharp white cheddar that's really gonna like uh, distract you from the fact that it's not just a normal burger. And then we're actually gonna take pastrami and then throw that right into the grill pan. So it's just gonna heat up that pastrami and then we're gonna put it right on top of the cheese and that's actually gonna help the cheese melt. Food fears, come back to me. I need you and I fear your food fears. All right, so we're gonna add that pastrami right on top there. Then we're gonna pull that off. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and toast the bun in that same pan. We're actually gonna get some of that beef fat infused right in the bun. Then I can use that plate to hold the burger. Food fears! Now we start building. All right, so you're gonna lay down a base of Russian dressing. Just a couple happy little pickles. Let's go tomato next. A little bit of iceberg lettuce. Because vegetables are important. Then on goes our massive heart burger monstrosity. Then fried onions and then place of crown of Russian dressing to burger top bun on top of the bun top. Bun top. 
and then flip the bun very slowly to crown. So you ready cool. to see what I made? I'm pretty excited, yeah. All right. You awesome. made this just for me. I did make this just for you. Okay. What I made for you, this is the beef heart pastrami cheeseburger. Whoa! So we have a cheeseburger with Russian dressing and beef heart pastrami and then a ground beef heart patty. I'm gonna go ahead and slice this bad boy in half. Wow, can we get this cross section in? I wanna see the, the middle. Wow. Oh, shift it a little bit. My gosh, <clears throat> that is impressive. There it is revealed. Okay, I have one more special treat. Because uh -oh. I know you're used to some very high-end food. Oh, no. I watched the show. Hold on. No. Hold on. We aim to impress our guests here. Oh, no. A single sheet. Oh. I mean, of gold I, leaf. I mean, I appreciate it. I hate how this is my reputation now. Pick it up, and we're just going to go ahead and tip it and dip it. All right. Cheers. Are you not entertained? Honestly? This or in and out uh, Actually, I was just in and out but, uh, <laughs> but I had to think about it. I did have to think about it. I mean, good job with the meat. Like, look at this. Thank you. Can I show this to the camera? This oh, is please. Show everything to the perfect medium camera. rare. And with heart, you want to go rare on it. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, because it's a lean muscle. I think you made me believe that you can do anything. Because I think anybody would eat this. If you didn't tell them it was heart, they would just be like, oh, it's a little funky, but I kind of like it. That's all I ask for, is that people come on here and compliment me. You have some sauce in your lips. I mean, I, I, I don't know if I should tell you or just let it go. Oh, <laughs> just let it run. Oh, man, that tongue thing was weird, <laughs> but okay. All right, well, Steven, thank you so much. And everybody, check out Steven on BuzzFeed's Worth It. Travels the globe, eats delicious food. It's awesome. I mean, this was a special experience, though, so thank you. But was it worth it? Uh... Thank you guys so, so much for watching and supporting me. And if you want to keep supporting me, Please subscribe to the Mythical YouTube channel. If we get enough subscribers, we can keep making awesome food content. So please subscribe, please keep watching, and thank you so much.